Hey, hi guys, Dr. Dan Nightingale here, your clinical dementia specialist. I hope you're having a good day, a good week. I certainly am. Now, today's subject is based on a question that I am often asked if I'm speaking at a conference or doing a presentation or speaking with relatives or professionals is, is dementia inevitable? Now, it might sound like a straightforward question, but it isn't because there isn't a straightforward answer of yes or no. We have to take a number of things into consideration when we ask that question. And one of the main things we need to think about are the contributing factors to dementia. So I would put forward that if you have a very unhealthy diet, that you are overweight, you have a lot of stress in your life. You don't have much happiness or joy. You don't socialize and your lifestyle is not conducive to overall health and well-being. Then I would argue that for you or for that person who has that kind of lifestyle, dementia is likely. So the other thing to think about is what are the contributing factors other than what we've just said? Things that may not be within our control, things that are not within our control. For example, age. As we age, we become more susceptible to all kinds of illnesses and diseases as our body um, changes. However, we can, we can greatly reduce that risk of our body changing negatively through diet, nutrition, exercise, lifestyle. Don't take on stress. Don't worry about stuff. When you worry about something, you're not worrying about something that's happening right here, right now. You're worrying about something that may or may not happen in the future. Focus on being present focus on mindfulness. The second thing that is a contributing factor is Down syndrome. If people are living with Down syndrome, there's a greater risk as they age that they will develop and present with Alzheimer's disease, which is of course the most common type of dementia. And this is because of the correlation between the beta amyloid plaques that build up in the brain leading to Alzheimer's disease and the fact that there's a, an awful lot of beta amyloid on chromosome 21. And with people with Down syndrome, there's an extra arm on chromosome 21. So there's an additional um, bunch of tau protein. Okay, so that's uh, the second one. The third one is something called an apolipoprotein LL. Now, when we're born, mum will give us an apolipoprotein gene and dad will give us an apolipoprotein gene. And there are three variants, two, three and four. If you are an APOE4 carrier, then you have a, an increased risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Now, I'm not saying you will develop Alzheimer's disease, but there's an increased risk. If you have APOE4 from mum and APOE4 from dad, then that puts you at a massively greater risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. The fourth one is diabetes. People who have type 2 diabetes are at a greater risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. And there's a big correlation between insulin uptake in the brain, Alzheimer's disease and diabetes. So there's the four uh, main contributing factors to the higher risk of developing Alzheimer's disease or other forms of, of dementia. So the answer, is dementia inevitable, is more complex than a yes or a no. What we have to think about is, how do we reduce the risk then?
if if one school of thought is as we get so old dementia is inevitable and a school of thought that says well no it isn't inevitable um i i know a neurologist who is 102 years of age and he's still practicing so if you're watching this hi hope you're doing okay and uh, a very belated happy birthday so in that case we can say it isn't inevitable but what can we do to reduce that risk massively and it's really all about diet nutrition lifestyle exercise so there's a whole bunch of things that if you don't do these things already think about changing think about transitioning into this kind of thing that i'm going to talk to you about now diet and nutrition everybody who follows me and everybody who follows my channel knows that i am always telling people to dump the soda soda is poison for the brain it is full of sugar full of sugar that we don't want even diet sodas bad for you so we always dump the soda so cut out sugar from your diet as much as you possibly can cut out the sugar of course we need a little bit of sugar the bread needs some sugar but not what we are giving it uh, we're giving our brain our lifestyle has changed to everything is sugar we moved away from fat and everything is sugar well now these things are being rethought and we're thinking about how fat is now healthy rather than unhealthy and how sugar is the the real um, enemy so think about that think about your diet and lifestyle think about you know what does your body need why do we need to eat so much food throughout the day our ancestors didn't do this when we were hunter gatherers we didn't shove all kinds of food into our faces all day long we didn't eat three or four meals a day so why don't why do we do that now you know um, so think about how much you eat when you eat and what you eat cut down your carbs cut down your sugars make sure you focus on protein healthy fats um, it's what i'm always promoting now and what we're trying to do within the dementia field as a whole is talk about ketogenic diet and how positive a keto diet is for you um, we talked about apoe4 many people with apoe4 gene are very very susceptible to gluten well there's gluten in a lot of foods so if you are apoe4 cut out the gluten get rid of it altogether um, and if you want to find out more about diet and nutrition just ask me the question let me know send me a message and we'll talk about it the other thing is exercise got to get lots of exercise however you get that doesn't really matter as long as you get in exercise walking is fantastic for your body it's a, it's probably one of the best exercises in addition to weight training weight training is a really good exercise too it helps keep muscle on the body as we age so if we're working out in the gym and we're lifting weights we're helping to, to maintain muscle on our body we're stopping the body from from breaking down through a good diet nutrition exercise and um, brain health we've talked about this many times on my channel brain health is so important and if you combine that with exercise so count down from 100 in series of sevens while you're working out or walking is is absolutely amazing wonderful thing to do so no dementia is not inevitable for some people so think about changing your diet think about changing your lifestyle think about introducing the keto diet take a look at it see if it works for you it's not for everyone and another thing is fasting fasting is now becoming very very commonplace and it's also got some correlation with cognition and memory so 12-3 that's the the numbers you eat your last meal at 7 p.m and you go to bed at 10 p.m that's your three hours without food before you go to sleep 
and then you've had your meal at 7 p.m you will not eat again before 7 a.m that's your 12 hours and then um, focus on the healthy food that you can eat in that period of time so that's uh, that's a a recommendation that I'm giving to, to most of my patients. Now we're talking about diet, nutrition, fasting, exercise, brain health. Also, if you've got trauma, it has to be dealt with. You have to deal with trauma. Unresolved trauma, detrimental, could be a factor, could be a risk. So those are the things I want you to think about. Those are the things I want you to change in your life. Any questions about that, please send me an email, Dr. Downer. Uh, drdanielnightingale.com, see our website, drdanielnightingale.com, send me a message through Facebook, Instagram, or on this YouTube channel. So, have a fantastic rest of the week, enjoy the weekend, and just before you go, say it with me, dump the soda. <laughs>